السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام شف الانبیاء والمرسلین نبینا محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ڈیئر برادرز اینڈ سسٹرز ویلکم ٹو انسپائرڈ بائی اسلام اینڈ ان آ اسٹوڈیو وی ہیو امیزنگ گیسٹ اینڈ آئی واز ایکچولی آسکن ہیو فار سو لانگ ٹو کم ٹو مائی شو ماشاء اللہ ایٹ لاسٹ شی میڈ ایٹ نن ادر دین نیسٹ نیسٹ ویلکم ٹو آر شو تھینک یو سو ان دس شو وٹ وی ڈو ویز وی برنگ آؤٹ دا people who wants to bring different communities together and bring out the change in our society and make it a better place to live. So that's the idea of this show. And also sometimes we bring in um, people who comes to or became a Muslim from other faith and want to know how their journey is gone and uh, um, why did they change the religion and the faith. So it's, it's a beautiful place to be, especially having you in my show. Um, tell me about yourself, what do you do? And, um, Well, I'm now retired. I used to be a school teacher. Um, after I retired the first time round, as I call it, I went back to university. And that's when I did my degree in Abrahamic religions. And that's how I expanded my interest in other faiths and my range of friends. Wow. You know, when you say you've done a degree in Ibrahimic faith, mm. it, it's, it's, as a Muslim, that's what we believe. We're following Ibrahimic faith itself. We say Islam is not a new thing. Mm. It goes back to Adam and Eve. And Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Prophet Muhammad is the final prophet, we say. And they are a follower of Adam and Eve mm. in their faith. So basic faith never changes. Worshipping one God uh, and please him. and there is a hell and a heaven and paradise, there is a judgment day, there are angels around, and we all had a divine books. That's what we believe in. Mm. Uh, did you find that new, that is, when we say Islam is not a new religion? I didn't find it new as such. <coughs> and I think that was partly because of the teachers that we had at Heathrop. And we were a small group of students and we could ask each other questions and discuss things and it it was more that it, it the understanding developed rather than it was something absolutely new before you've done the degree what was your idea about muslims and islam what was going through your mind there were there were two things um Because of where I used to teach in a church school in Wilsdon Green, I had met many Muslim families who trusted their children to a Christian school because they wanted that religious ethos. And so I grew to know them as their children got older. And sometimes we would have students come and do work experience with us. So I got to know them again as teenagers. And, and so that was lovely because When you know people on a personal level, it affects the way you think about them and their community. But the other thing that I found was that in some of my Christian Bible study groups, some people would have very entrenched opinions about what Muslims said or thought. And I would say, well, the people I know don't say that sort of thing. But that was partly why I wanted to go and study more so that I could actually challenge some of those stereotypes on slightly more solid ground, if you like. Do you think as a Muslim community, as a minority community in the UK, that we are, are we struggling or are we not uh, um, sharing our faith openly to the whole community? Is that why the majority of the people or most of the people think Islam links with extremism and other things? It's hard to say because I'm, I'm quite privileged. I was teaching in Brent, which is a very, very diverse part of Northwest London. I was living in Harrow, which is similarly a very, very diverse part of Northwest London. That's where my children grew up. And because of the nature of those communities, there was quite a lot of interaction between different peoples. 
um, I do understand that in some other areas it might be different and it's when it's when it's not your next door neighbor or your your daughter's friend or your son's friend that's when I think things become more difficult because people don't cross the boundaries uh, of their different communities. After recently um, we, we see the uh, rise of uh, um, right wings or attacks on the Muslim woman, especially mm. one who covers the face. It's their choice and uh, um, they've been attacked f or spit at or pushed, you know, like they think uh, um, that these guys are backward and just because of the idea that we're coming out of the Europe and that affected lots of people. Um, what do you think we should do as a community? What do you think we should do? I'm not sure it's, there's an easy answer. Uh, I do find, I mean, it, it's easy to say it's post-Brexit, but the sort of language and attitudes that are tolerated now, which 10 years ago would have not been tolerated, I do find that quite frightening. And partly I think it's up to small communities and individuals to, to make a little bit of effort to understand their neighbours. Um, because if you start labelling people, you forget that they are him or her down the mm. road, round the corner, the person you meet in the shop. And we need to regain those little interactions. I don't think I would be wrong if I say you're a champion of peace. <laughs> I mean, the reason is you engage with so many people. I remember I met you in our mosque when mm -hmm. you came once. I met you a few times, actually. Yeah, uh, yes. With, you came with safe a few times. Yes, we had food together. Down, yes. And um, one time you were done a piece work from um, where to where? Is that? It? Um, I think that was the Westminster Interfaith, which is a Roman Catholic interfaith organisation that covers the diocese of Westminster. Um, and I started doing those peace walks actually a long time ago. I'm just remembering it was long before Heathrop. There, um, I did a WEA course on comparative religions and the teacher was a, an inspirational man, Alfred Agius, um, who was, had been director, I think, of Westminster Interfaith. And he introduced me to that particular peace walk. And it goes to different parts of the diocese every year. And sometimes it's the only time I bump into some people, you know, is, is, is year after year during that walk. But it's, you know, you get this strange group of people walking down a street and people stop and wonder what on earth are these people doing. And sometimes they join and sometimes we have pieces of paper to hand out to, to say, you know, we are just here to show that across all faiths and no faith, um, we stand for certain values about friendship and peace and just being good neighbours. Does the, does the peace work make the difference? I don't know. Um, I'm sure it would, but I'm just saying how difference does it make yeah, I, I, when I, people see I think you don't ever know what difference a little interaction is going to make. But does it make difference to you? Oh yes, yes. That's, that's the main part. I mean, yes. that's, that's the real part. That I'm trying my best to bring people together mm. and I'm doing that for and make a change yeah, in and society. Also, um, and also... And awareness. It's the little friendships that you make. And some people on that peace walk are people who work very hard in their community. And even if somebody like me who doesn't do the practical things, we can support the people who do all the practical stuff. You know, we can pray for them and just boost their willingness to go and get their hands dirty and you know, do the real thing. When you come to our mosque, what mm -hmm. was your expectation the first time you've been to the mosque? What was your expectation um, that? What do they do inside? I mean, what was your going through your mind the first time you've been to the mosque? I was quite surprised because your mosque is very big. 
and the ones I had visited before were very small and um, not even a purpose-built building, you know, just a, a converted house. Uh, and But every time I've been to visit a mosque, I've always been made to feel very welcome. And that, that, that wasn't, you know, that was the same at yours as it was of these tiny ones that I visited before. Did you ever ask, when you went to the small mosque, did you ever ask them, what, what do the women do? Does the woman come? To, did you have this in your head, like thinking, Oh well, we were. Is it the men? Is it the men's club, or what is it? What was going through your head? Well, because because I've always gone in a in a mixed group or a, in a women's group. Um, there's always been a senior woman there to meet us um, and to explain um, that the women sit here. Or, um, but also to actually to emphasize the important role of women, which wasn't what I was expecting in a way, because um, not in the organization anyway. I, in, uh, I know that women have a respected place in, in Islam, but I, I, I was a little bit surprised, even at a very traditional local mosque, at how important the women's group were, which was, which was quite nice. Fantastic. Because you're a student, or not a student actually, you've done your degree on inter, um, Abrahamic faith, that makes it, um, I didn't find many people who went that far mm. to learn about the people of other faith or Abrahamic faith. But when I read the Old Testament and the Jewish faith myself uh, and the Christianity, I wanted to know how they also believe. Um, like when it comes to covering your hair, hijab, mm. when we say cover your hair, that's been, this been practice been here for a very long time. Uh, Jewish community done it. They don't have poor. They don't uh, um, dress like men. Mm -hmm. They don't. They pray separately. And um, in, in same in the Christian faith as well. Like uh, Mother of Jesus, been covering her hair. Mm -hmm. And we look back. They also cover their hair. When it comes to attack on Muslim regarding those issues, how come our friends don't back us up? Like, look, we we actually have some same values we have. Mm -hmm. We want women to be respected, we don't want our women to be, it's their choice to wear what they wear. Why do you think that we don't get the help from the both sides of the Abrahamic faith religion? Or do you think they don't know? Or I, I think some of it is ignorance, yes. Um, I mean, some people don't, don't realize that, um, for example, Orthodox Jewish women cover their, cover their head. Um, I have Christian female friends who always wear a hat or a scarf when they pray because that's, that is their cultural tradition. Um, also, they pray separately as well, isn't it? The men on one side, the women yeah, on Yeah, sometimes that's so. Um, but I think, I think sometimes we don't look outside our very own bit mm. of the tradition. Um, you know, I, I have an, an elderly African friend who always covers her hair um, because that's the way she was brought up in, in her cultural tradition. I have a Caribbean friend who is a pastor in a church. She always covers her head when she is praying or worshipping because that is her tradition. Now, not, not everyone knows that. Partly, you have to be a little bit nosy about people. You know, you have to um, want to know why and give people the chance to tell you why they do certain things. And I think it's a shame that that isn't happening in a, in a broader sense. I mean, I, I, I know Muslim women who, who don't cover their hair. There are plenty. Yeah, to be um, and and we've we've talked about about it. But do you think the faith group? I'm talking about Ibrahimic faith now. That we're struggling, that uh, uh, getting their uh, sisters, uh, our uh, mothers and sisters, involved in 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 faith work. Do you think we're struggling? So if you if you go and see a uh, uh, Jewish community or, or Christian community or Muslim community, we don't have many faith women leaders or teachers, or lecturers, 
you know, you name them, we're all struggling. But that wasn't the case, especially with Islam, that wasn't the case before. Mm. We know the, the Prophet's wives, they were preachers, they used to teach, they were teachers. Even the first university we hear from Moroccan, a sister. In the, in the world. She was the woman who mm. started the university. So when it comes to now, we don't find many, many of them are taking the lead. Mm. That probably affecting the way we see things in the world? I think there are plenty of them around. Um, I mean, I can think of eminent women in all three faiths who are respected scholars. But somehow they're not the ones who get the publicity. They might be the people that students read or listen to, but they're not the ones who are on the TV screen, for example. So what do you think we should do as a uh, the, the, the woman supporter or woman rights supporter? or What can we do? What can they do, you think, to come to the front line? Because their views are so important. They are, their views are important and their scholarly insight and their spiritual insight is so important. You're the guy in the media, okay. so how, how you, perhaps you should get a sheikha and a rabbi here you know, to, to discuss these things, to, to discuss why they aren't so much in, in the forefront. Um, do you follow any faith yourself? Do you? I consider myself a Christian. Um, I'm still a member of the Church of England at my old church where I used to worship when I lived in Harrow. And... Uh, Mostly these days I worship with the Quakers um, just down the road from where I live. Is Quaker is a, a big uh, a community or a small community in Christian um, Do you mean locally or generally? Generally, are they? I think ge generally it's quite small. The meeting I attend is actually quite large. Um, but they they have quite a lot of influence, I think, in pricking people's consciences about matters of social justice and equality, uh, diversity. Um, would you call it a bit liberal Christian faith more or would you call it...? Probably. Um, I think the, the phrase that I find very attractive, and I'm still learning about Quakerism, is that there is something of God in everyone and that Quakers see something of God in every person and so that that underpins all the political and social actions that that they support or get involved in. Is it more like our uh, um, uh, our Hindu brother and sister they think God is in everything or is it more different like God in everyone? Is it physical or is it just like some qualities in it or what? I, th it? I think it's that there's a divine spark inside everybody, which I think you also find in Judaism, that there's, there is that holy, there's that bit of holiness inside all people. But certainly respect for the earth would, would also come into it, as far as I know. Okay. As, as, as a, what we believe is like um, the God created the universe. Mm -hmm the sun and the moon and everything in the universe. For him to create, he just says, be and he becomes. And um, so when you create something, say I create, I made this one. I don't have to be inside. No. Because I made that, I know how it works. Mm. So for unknown person to know how that works, you need a guidebook, like your, whatever we get with it. So we call the divine book is the guidebook for humanity to know what to do in this life and what, how you get the salvation and the, um, um, where you end up. So he's been told, don't do this. Reminder all the time, don't be cheaty, don't do the naughty thing, don't mm. be a liar, don't kill anyone, don't save the humanity, save everything we have. Um, so we say God is not part of the, the creation, that's what we say. But God has put something within ourselves. He created in the nature that we know what's good and bad. Mm. And give, he's given us everything, all the tools are there, but your choice, your freedom. You choose what you do, so mm. your choice that will be accounted for. You can choose anyway. And we also believe destiny, like God knows what we're going to do because he's all-knowing. 
this is the only thing that the creator is the, we call him God because he's all knowing. There's no creation knows the future. No, we don't know what's going to happen. Even when Jesus was asked, what's the, when is the last day? He said, I don't know the last day. The prophet Muhammad was asked, when is the last day? He said, I, I don't know the last day because I'm not the, I don't know the future. Only God knows the future. So that's how we see things. Mm. Um, that's why we say um, you can't, this God is nothing like his creation. So if someone makes a table, he doesn't have to be like a table. And he doesn't have to be part of the table. Mm. That's how we see things. I remember when my son actually came one day to home and said, oh, I've been studying Bible in, in, in the school. It's the uh, um, Church of England school. I said, well, you know, I said, you read it, it's fine. But when you get somewhere you can't understand, share it with me. If I know, I share it. And he said, I don't know, when they talk about Isa, um, Isa alayhi salam, that he looks, he, he sounds different. He sounds like something divine. But the, the Isa alayhi salam we talk about and we love and we follow, he looks different. He's more like a prophet. A prophet. I said, yeah, so that's what we do. We love Jesus. Not many people knows that. We love his mother. Not many people knows that. So how do we show or how do we go out and show that how much we love Jesus? That would make the two party come together maybe or I don't know how do you do that. What do you think we should do? Well, I th a lot of it does come... Did you know before <coughs> you met Muslim that we love Jesus and we follow his teachings? I think so because okay. I knew about... Um, there's this fact about Mary is mon mentioned more often in the Quran than in the Bible. It, you know, it, it's sort of so these things happen slowly. I don't remember when I first learnt that, but I do think that teaching religion is important. Um, I've been quite disturbed recently. A friend of mine who did the same degree. He now teaches uh, religious education um, not far from here. But there are parents who are taking their children out of religious education classes because the school is teaching about Islam. Oh. And this, this just came up in the news last week. And I find that a bit scary because the one thing that we should be doing is learning more about each other. And if young people who may actually want to learn are being prevented by their elders from learning then I find that I find that quite scary and I think we should make it easier for teachers to simply teach you d just because you're teaching a religion doesn't mean you're proselytizing it doesn't mean you're recruiting it just means that you're teaching and I think it's important that we learn from each other that you know that that how we do it I'm not sure but people like my young friend who is still there teaching religion I mean their contribution is just so valuable yeah we we'll get to hear <coughs> that um, <coughs> especially in the UK that we have only 5% people are actually regular prayers yeah can you imagine 95 percent people are not religious? It, quite. Not regular. I mean, yeah. they are probably are. They probably identify themselves as a, uh, um, some kind of religion they mm. like or they assess to. But only five percent people are religious, and we have a bigger job to do. If we if we say we are part of that religion, uh, um, that means we got divine power behind us. And it should, we should be shining, the showing the love for the humanity, the community, the society, and the world. And maybe we're not doing that enough. Maybe why people are running away from the faith? Because mm. maybe we're not promoting as we should do. Or maybe we're not practicing as we should do. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe not. And I think that's where small local initiatives are so important. When local faith groups get together, whether they get together for a peace walk or worshipping together at special times or supporting a night shelter for the homeless or food banks. I think all those little things, they might not look very much in percentage terms, but they're the things that on the ground
grow the understanding and with a bit of luck people will learn about each other's faiths as well. Okay, we just end of our uh, show now. I want you to say something to our viewers about how to bring people together, especially you're an expert in that field. Um, you have a minute. Be friendly. Be nosy. Yeah, um, let, people, let people ask you questions. Sometimes we have to be challenged about our own faith to make us think about our faith. And when we do that, when we let the barriers down, then little friendships can grow. And out of little friendships, who knows? Thank you for your some time today. Actually, I really enjoyed it and I've learned so much as well. I probably need to call you back again to learn more about Ibrahimic faith. That's very important to know. <laughs> I'll, I'll to go <laughs> back to my notes. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters, thank you for your time being in front of the TV and watching us. And I'm sure you've been inspired by Inest. Um, I think, just like she said, we need to be more friendly, go out and talk to people and let people ask us about our faith or anything. It's nothing to hide off. And uh, we need to be have more confidence sharing our faith because it's a beautiful faith it interacts or tells us to bring the peace to the world and the universe so let's make the difference inshallah let's knock our neighbors and say I'm Muslim I'm proud Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh